This is my 1895C model Marlin. C for cowboy. It's a limited edition sold exclusively by Cabela's and that was the reason that I bought it because I like the tapered octagon barrel. It's an 18 and a half inch barrel. 1 in 20 twist with ballard rifling rather than microgroove. And I know it was somewhat of a risky thing buying a late model Marlin because as many of you know the company that's owned by Cerberus Capital Management called the uh, Freedom Group. They bought out uh, Bushmaster, H&R, Remington, uh, DPMS, Barnes, Dakota Arms, uh, AAC, the uh, Suppressor Company, Advanced Armament, uh, Tapco, and Para USA, among a few others. Uh, those are the main firearms companies that were bought out by them. And now, these, uh, you know, since 2008, they're not built by the same craftsmen on the same machinery that they used to be. Uh, from my understanding, the machinery was worn out that they were using to build. Marlins, uh, and it was probably time that they, you know, got into the the more modern methods of uh, CNC machining anyway. But I guess they didn't even have uh, machinist drawings. They didn't have any detailed drawings of these things because the guys that set up their machines just knew what they were doing. And, and that's kind of sad when they take a company and, and buy it out and move it and the, the guys that you know spent their whole life learning the job and and building you know a fine rifle it, it does bug me almost to the point where I actually think should I have even supported a company that does that you know the the new uh, freedom group Remington company that builds these I don't know I, I want to stay positive I mean this the gun industry has changed and that's just the reality of it. I don't know if I should blackball the whole company just because that happened. But the bottom line was I wanted this rifle and I didn't want to pay $1,500 for it. Uh, there was only one other rifle ever made. Uh, it was a custom that had the octagon barrel that was short like that uh, with the full length magazine tube that goes out to the end. Yeah, that's a unique rifle, and that's how I wanted it, so I decided to go for it. I My collection of lever actions is well represented by Marlin with the old ones. Uh, I don't have any Marlins that have a... None of my Marlins have the cross-bolt safety that they started in 1983. They're all older than that. Most of them are much older. Uh, so I thought, I'll take a shot at this, and we'll see how it turns out see how it looks and I think it's okay I think I did all right with this uh, the fit and finish on the furniture is is good I mean I'm glad that they didn't put checkering on this thing that was another reason I wanted this one uh, this Cabela's exclusive you know the cowboy version because I don't like checkering on a rifle like this uh, I like how this looks after time. Uh, I like the finish on this barrel. It's smooth. It's uh, shiny. Some of the Marlins in the past were kind of rough looking. You know, kind of like, you notice how like Ruger single action handguns uh, way back, like say before 76, you know, when they started putting the warnings on the barrels. You know how those looked. Uh, they were kind of smooth and shiny. That's how this one looks. Uh, I don't like it when you can see uh, kind of rough lines on it. But like I said, it it was risky. <laughs> because everything I read about them since 2008, you know, when Freedom Group bought them, they, they totally trashed the brand. They should have shut down instead of continuing to make these things. They used up the parts and I think the old Marlin parts were used up by around 2010 maybe, 9 or 10. 
and then they started making their own and when you see the the Remington stamp here then you know it's a full-fledged Remington it doesn't have the JM over here and this one says Ilian New York right on it so that's a full-fledged Remlin as they call them in the forums uh, this one I'm gonna leave stock for a while because I like to do that with my guns. I like to leave them stock and get used to them the way they are stock and then later on if I feel like it I can uh, put aftermarket parts like a trigger or ejector um, but for now I just wanted to smooth everything up with some 600 grit sandpaper you know without removing metal I'm just shining them up and then I take flits on a soft fiber wheel at low speed and just kind of polish everything up like the groove here where the the extractor groove and the whole bolt and um, the locking lugs there in the the carrier I, I actually polished pretty good right here and on the end but again I didn't remove any metal and one of the only things that really did bother me about this was the finger lever it's got some weird kind of rough surface there that I didn't really like and I think I'm gonna send pictures of this to Marlin and see what they say about that because I don't quite know what process they use if it's metal injection molding or what but that doesn't look right and I think that should be better uh, the only other thing was the the fit of the stock to the receiver there's a slight gap and I actually wondered if maybe they were doing that so that the recoil wasn't getting into the stock too much you know so they wouldn't create cracks but you can see where the tang is where it meets up to the stock is a little bit of a gap there and just a little bit of a gap on the sides my, none of my old marlins look like that and my understanding is that they used to take a receiver with both tangs in the old days and they would heat that up cherry red and slide that onto the stock and do that's how they would do their final fitting on each one and they would get it to fit perfectly I like that that's that's how these rifles should be built uh, but again I want to pay the real big bucks for uh, authentic New Haven Connecticut uh, um, octagon barreled 4570 1895 I just didn't want to spend that much money and try to find one uh, and here I have a brand new rifle to start with and I kind of like tinkering with them too I, I don't mind doing the final smoothing of the action and all that I mean eventually I'll probably put a metal follower in it and all those standard things that people do I did uh, smooth up inside the loading gate port here uh, because it was sharp and it was shaving brass when I was loading it uh, that should be a big improvement and other than that there there really wasn't any problem with it like there was no burrs the action wasn't rough at all when I got it uh, I just wanted it to be a little bit you know kind of speed up the break in by polishing the parts is all I was doing um, that's something I wouldn't even mind doing to one of my older Marlins too so I'm gonna put this thing together and see if what I did here makes any difference something I want to point out here while I have this apart yet is the cross bolt safety um, you know they started putting these on in 1983 and none of my other Marlins or Winchesters have that feature so it, it does get confusing if most of your guns don't have it and one does and I've had this thing already in the short time I've had it I've had that inadvertently activated because if it's even slightly uh, on it will block the hammer and you, you're pulling ammo out and looking at primers and it doesn't even dawn on you if you have my experience oh. no it's in battery 
Oh, you know what it is? I should have thought of that immediately. You can still see red, but I pushed the button a little bit. The cross bolt safety sucks. I didn't activate that on purpose. It happened inadvertently. There, there's a perfect example. The only uh, redeeming value for that, I think, would be deer hunting, because you could, if you had a deer coming and you wanted to be quiet, I think if you pinch this between your fingers and operate it real carefully, you could probably do it more quietly than cocking the hammer. Uh, I might use this for deer hunting, I don't know, but in the meantime, I've screwed in the Allen screw right here all the way in, so I've disabled this. It, you can't move it. I think that's how I'm going to leave it. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But the, uh, the action does seem very smooth. I mean, it wasn't bad before, but I didn't uh, do any work on the hammer or the bottom of the bolt here. You know, gunsmiths, when they do their action tuning jobs, they'll take this down. I just want to leave the thing stock, so there's going to be a little bump right there. But I did polish the, the hammer on the face where it hits firing pin and right here on this transition. Um, because the bluing would wear off there anyway, I polished it up nice and bright. And that does make it a lot more smooth. Also, I want to mention that I use Loctite 242 for uh, the threads on all the screws, a real small amount. I don't want this stuff gobbed up inside the action, so I actually put it on the screw and then wipe the excess off with a rag, just so that you can see it in the threads. All right, I give it the pinky test here. Put the hammer down. You know, that's about as smooth as I've ever felt on any Marlin. That is actually very nice. I'm happy with that. I don't think I would need any more tricking out than just the polish job. I got some dummy rounds here that I made up so we can prove the action here. I see I'm not shaving grass anymore since I smoothed that opening out at a loading port. One finger, very, very smooth. No complaints there. I think this is going to be just fine. I'll tell you, if any of you guys are thinking about getting one of these new Remington-made Marlins, you, you have to consider one thing. Um, they're not really a finished product, at least not as of March of 2015. Uh, this one wasn't bad, but it wasn't the greatest. Uh, for instance, right here, the uh, finger lever, I like these square finger levers. They seem to fit fine for me, but this edge was so sharp, you'd cut yourself. So I uh, I broke that with a file, and then went over it with some real fine 600 grit sandpaper. Uh, it doesn't really show up that much. I didn't really want to disturb the bluing, but you know, with use, this is gonna look like that anyway. So that isn't that big of a problem. And the minor touching up I did around the receiver, like in the loading port. Uh, that any uh, lever action could benefit from a little touch up there. Uh, you know, the wood is fine. The bluing looks really nice on this one. I think they might put a little more care into, even Remington probably puts a little more care into the cowboy version of this rifle. You know, more so than, say, just a plain Jane 3030 hunting rifle. But I don't know that for sure. Uh, Think of it as 
you know, like Century International Arms, uh, they got a bad rap for low quality, but I have purchased a lot of them over the years because I consider it a kit gun, you know, an incomplete firearm. I know there's something going to be wrong with it when I buy it, and that's part of the fun, and that's actually where I was at with this. I expected this to be a lemon when I bought it, and uh, if I didn't have, if I didn't already have nice old, uh, you know, jam stamp John Marlin New Haven uh, rifles in my collection, I wouldn't have bothered with this. I wouldn't have wanted this to be my only Marlin, put it that way. Um, but I was kind of curious, and because this one's unique, I had to give it a try. And it, in the end, it turned out real fine. I didn't have to send it back or anything like that. Anyway, that's my 4570 Marlin 1895 Cowboy with the 18 half inch barrel, tapered octagon, all that good stuff. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you liked the video.